My dear friends, welcome to Uncaged Zoo Tours. If you are new to the channel and love animals, I recommend and appreciate hitting the like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to join me on my tours. Aloha, as in hello my friends. We're heading to another new zoo, the Louisville Zoo. This zoo has three award-winning exhibits, including the Gorilla Forest, where you can get really close to a gorilla, and the Glacier Run, which has one of my favorite sea lion exhibits and has a rotational bear exhibit. There's also the Snow Leopard Pass, where you can stand under a snow leopard. But my favorite exhibit at the Louisville Zoo was also the main highlight of my visit, the award-winning Islands which opened in 1997. The reason why this exhibit is considered to be an award-winning attraction is that it was the first zoo exhibit in the world to rotate multiple animals across different exhibits. Plus, this exhibit showcases island animals from around the world. Let's begin! Cowabunga! The Islands is one of the first exhibits you might see, or the very last, depending on which way you go. There are millions of islands around the world, and each one has its own wildlife. For example, Australia is home to black swans and little blue penguins. I haven't talked about these little blue birds since my Rue Valley and Eagle Erie at the Cincinnati Zoo tour. Anyways, little blue penguins nest in burrows in the sand or rocky places. In the wild, they nest every month of the year. In captivity, little blue penguins nest indoors in the winter and early spring, and each pair has at least one or two chicks. They're also fast swimmers, and according to a scientific study, which was conducted in 2012, these birds possess a bubble boost. By fluffing their feathers, they release bubbles, which helps the penguins swim faster through the water. Oh. And you might hear this. I wonder why they're doing that. Island animals are so cool. Some animals, like the Aldabra giant tortoise, became giants due to having no large predators until humans arrived on the island. Tortoises are slow so they were really easy to hunt for food. Sailors stacked them on their backs until they were ready to cook them. But on a lighter note, Aldabra giant tortoises have very little communication. During the breeding season, tortoises lie down and rub their heads and necks with their noses. And unlike what you see in cartoons, tortoises cannot go out of their shells because it's part of their skeleton. But these guys are surprisingly good swimmers. The tortoises also live with our first Dalmatian pelicans. They are the world's largest pelicans and can weigh up to 30 pounds. Their name isn't based on a spotted dog. It comes from where they originate, Dalmatia, Croatia. Dalmatian pelicans have gray and white feathers with black tipped wings and orange and yellow beaks. When flying, pelicans tuck their huge beaks against their neck and hold their head on their shoulders. Although Dalmatian pelicans are quiet, they may flap their wings and make noises to scare threats away. I'm not a threat, I'm a nice guy. Now our next stop is the Caviar House, which contains two of the four flex habitats. You'll never know who you'll meet. One of the five animals that rotate around these flex habitats are Siamangs, but there's also a Sumatran tiger. Tigers are one of my favorite big cats, and other than their silent but deadly stalking, I love their stripes. It's part of their identity. But if you look closely at their forehead, a tiger's stripe pattern bears a resemblance to the Chinese symbol for king. I guess that makes sense considering how they're symbols of courage and strength. Tigers close their eyes to show that they're safe. And what's cool about the Louisville Zoo is that they have two species of tigers. The other is the Amor tiger in the tiger taiga. 
The next exhibit contained a Malayan taper on my visit. If you think it's an aardvark, elephant, or an anteater, that's okay. Tapers are pachyderms like elephants, but they're more closely related to rhinos and horses. They're in the family Perissodactyla, which is a group of hoofed mammals that have an odd number of toes. Plus, rhinos and tapers shared a common ancestor that lived over 50 million years ago. Tapers are also featured in many folklore around the world, but I wish they were represented more in animation. In Japan, tapers are associated with the Japanese mythological being Baku, which is believed to eat nightmares. Next door in the Banjar house is one of my favorite animals, the orangutan. These shaggy apes are built for the trees, and when it rains, orangutans may use leaves like umbrellas, and like gorillas, they build nests to sleep in every night. They make their nests in around 10 minutes by using smaller branches as a mattress and bind the bed together using larger branches and leaves. Also, when you visit the islands, you might get very close to an orangutan like I did. This is Teak, and he loves waiting for children to see him. One of the children who was with me got to show the ape some of her food. Also, an orangutan's fur is orange because it helps them blend into the sunlight. Their eyes are also dark brown and act like sunglasses to protect them from the bright sun. Scientists aren't exactly sure why orangutans do this. Let's move on from the Banjar house into the survival station, where you might see our first Rodriguez flying foxes. These bats got their name because they come from Rodriguez, an island in the Indian Ocean, which is east of Madagascar. The fox part of the bat's name comes from their fox-like faces, bright eyes, and pointy ears. Unlike most bats, Rodriguez flying foxes are most active at sunrise and sunset. Since they hunt mostly in the daytime, Rodriguez flying foxes don't need echolocation like other bats, plus they mostly eat fruit. While they must deal with habitat loss and hunting, Rodriguez flying foxes also must face birds and rats, who hunt them along with bad weather, which led conservationists to place the bats in protective care. However, 80% of the population is part of a population on Rodriguez. Across from the bats are a bunch of tropical birds, like Nicobar pigeons, crested wood partridges, Victoria crown pigeons, marinara fruit doves, and a bunch of others I don't need to mention, but the next exhibit is the final flex habitat that rotates some of the same animals. And I gotta say, being close to an orangutan twice in one day can really give you bragging rights. The reason why these animals rotate is because it gives them more to do, plus it helps them experience changes in their routine. The keepers rotate the orangutans, tigers, siamangs, taper, and our first babarusas, which are a type of wild pig. It's worth noting that Albus and Patrice gave birth to a piglet. A babarusa's gestation period is between 125 and 150 days which is around four to five months. When this little guy gets older, they will grow tusks from their lower jaw, but males have two additional tusks that act like deer antlers, which explains why their Indonesian name translates to deer pig. Like warthogs, male babarusas use their tusks to fight over females. There are also four subspecies of babarusas, and the North Sulawesi Babarusa has a major dental problem. Like a beaver's teeth, male Babarusa tusks never stop growing, and they may grow so long that they will break through the skull and kill them unless they grind them down by fighting with other males. Our next stop is a walk-through aviary. These never get old. Plus, you might find green-naped pheasant pigeons, more Victoria crown pigeons, and a bunch more. But the goofball of the bunch is this hyacinth macaw. I've never been this close to one. Besides, they're the largest macaw species. Even if they don't live on an island, seeing a hyacinth macaw is such a treat. Besides, parrots are my favorite bird. 
A macaw's tongue is very scaly and dry, unlike ours, because it has a bone inside. Macaws use their bony tongues to tap open tough fruit. The next animal is from Central and South America, the prehensile-tailed porcupine. Unlike other porcupines, their tail isn't covered in spines, because it would be hard for them to wrap their tail on trees. Prehensile-tailed porcupines spend most of their lives in the trees because they are clumsy on the ground. Let's move on before I wake them up. Following the porcupine are some more coastal birds, including Inca terns and African penguins. I mean, it's always a treat to see penguins at any zoo. The last two exhibits contain some more giant reptiles, like the Komodo dragon, who I didn't see. Don't worry, we'll see more of them when we visit the aviary and Asia at Zoo Tampa. But across from them is our first Cuban crocodile. Out of all the crocodilians in the world, the Cuban crocodile has the smallest range, leaving in Cuba's Zapata and Lanier swamps. Cuban crocodiles are mainly threatened by humans who hunt them and destroy their habitats. Plus, Cuban crocodiles can hybridize with American crocodiles, and there are over 3,000 purebred Cuban crocodiles in the wild. These factors have made them critically endangered but the Louisville Zoo is part of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums Species Survival Plan and collaborates with Cuban conservation agencies to protect Cuban crocodiles. Our planet is like an island in the universe, and through our awareness, many animals won't go extinct. You can make a difference by supporting zoos and conservation groups like the Louisville Zoo that are committed to helping wildlife from the islands and other parts of the world. And with that, our trip to an award-winning exhibit comes to a close. If you plan on visiting the Louisville Zoo, I would highly recommend this area because getting close to animals can give you a greater understanding of their world. Now it's time to vote on one of these three Louisville Zoo exhibits. First is a quick look at the Gorilla Forest, where we'll get close to a gorilla and see a cute pygmy hippo. Our second choice is a two-in-one of the Tiger Taiga and Snow Leopard Pass, where we'll see a tiger and a snow leopard eat, along with seeing one of the best snow leopard exhibits around. And our final option is Glacier Run. We'll catch a sea lion show, see a grizzly bear swim, and even witness the return of the stellar sea eagle. Before I say goodbye, I have a question. What's one animal that makes a zoo fun for you? Thank you for watching my videos, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. As they say in Hawaii, aloha, which means hello and goodbye.